Chest Diagnostic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chest Diagnostic. The 12 year old international master, future grandmaster, boy wonder, Pragnananda, has done it again. He beat a 2700 grandmaster, David Howell, at the Isle of Man. And I covered one of his games earlier. Um, it really impressed me just the level of competence that this 12 year old kid has. Uh, it's really making me evaluate my life because how is a 12 year old playing this good? I, I don't know. We're going to go over this game and Pragnananda is white. It really impressed me how he plays this rook ending, especially since I've been working on my rook endings um, for future videos. We'll get into that as well. So let's start here. He starts with e4, c6, d4, d5, and now we have the advanced variation of the Karo Khan, uh, getting that bishop out of the light square pawn chain. And actually it starts off pretty slow with bishop to e2, knight to e7, castles, and now with c5 trying to undermine this pawn chain here. Um, it's similar to the French defense um, in that he needs to advance his pawn, bring his knight out, and then put pressure on the base of the pawn chain. Uh, but we see actually Prognananda strike back with c4, trying to undermine Black's pawn chain as well. He takes, and now we just get normal development, just playing in the center, and after knight takes c4, threatening knight to d6 check, he brings the knight in with the bishop covering that square, and then a pawn trade, bishop takes, and now this bishop's active, black's ready to castle. White has a slight advantage because he's a little more developed, but really no problems for either player. So this line isn't too theoretical, uh, we've just had some trades, and after black castles, it's completely equal. So Pragnananda doesn't really outplay David Howell. Um, until the end, but what he manages to do here is just play incredibly solid and that's the base level for these kid grandmasters. He really makes no mistakes and he just allows his 2700 opponent to try to complicate things and outplay him, but at the same time he makes zero mistakes. Queen to b3, um, there's really no huge options here for white. He's just trying to develop his queen now. The rooks are connected. Um, he'll place his rooks on the D and C file, and we'll just get some center play. There's really no possibility for a kingside attack. Um, a slightly better move might have been knight to h4, attacking the bishop. And the computer actually recommends a kind of ridiculous line of h6, bishop takes, and then the bishop back, protecting that bishop. So we could have won a bishop for a knight, uh, but instead he just plays queen to b3, possibly preventing b4, uh, chasing away the knight from protecting the e4 pawn. And after h6, uh, he could just bring his bishop back, but instead he forces some trades with knight to e3. And now he's threatening Pragnananda is threatening the knight as well as the bishop. And he could just take on here, but actually it weakens his own position. Uh, the computer evaluates it actually as a slight positive for black, but David Howell correctly evaluates that if he takes here, and then we get knight takes, um, he could take here and then he'd have some weak pawns and some problems, or he could take with a bishop check. But after takes. Um, there's multiple options for white to take this pawn, um, take this pawn, and black's position is just looking a little loose. So I understand why he didn't go for this line, um, because even though the computer might evaluate it as a slight advantage for black, he's actually quite passive, and white has these open files for his rooks, some weak pawns to attack for black, and now he might have a chance to start a kingside attack. So he doesn't go for that line, we just see a trade-off of all these pieces.
And now David Howell offers a queen trade um, at the expense of doubled pawns. But after a3, there's really no realistic way for white to attack these weak pawns yet. And at this point, there's actually a slight advantage for black because now he has a semi-open file for his rook. Um, he's going to be able to take the D file. And we get some peace maneuvering for the upcoming rook endgame. So bishop d4, knight back. This is the peace maneuvering. And now the bishop's more centralized, activating his own bishop. Um, another idea was to just play knight back to reroute it to c3. But I understand why he wanted to keep this C file open. Now, it might look like white can penetrate in the C file, but it doesn't really work because black would just contest it and there would be further trades. So that's why we don't see that. And now David Howell is planning to put pressure on the D file with these pieces in line, protecting his bishop. And now with G5, we see a trade because that knight was threatening a check here. Um, I was evaluating whether this was a strong move, and actually the computer thinks it's good. Um, another idea would have been... Let's go back here. Another idea would have been to play f3 and just simply activate the king, stacking in the pressure and eventually providing support for uh, the pieces with the king on e3 but he just forces a trade of that knight. And now with rook to a5, it looks like there might be time for rook to c7, but actually not because we'd actually just force a trade and black, all his problems would be solved, undoubling his pawns, and he would have a slight advantage. So very accurate play by Prognananda at this point, attacking that rook, doubling his rooks on the D file. And as I said, so David Howell is dominating the D file and uh, we get some very accurate accurate play by Prognananda in order to keep himself in the game because the danger is uh, black owning this D file, contesting it, and then um, eventually just grinding him down because this pawn's pretty weak on E5. All right, bishop to C4. Bishop back, knight back, and now with g3, uh, white is starting to get his king in the game. Releasing the pin. Now, so black is following the correct strategy of just trying to attack the weak pawns from behind, uh, but he starts to fall apart by Prognananda creating further pawn weaknesses, and we'll see how he does that. So the bishop comes out, activating his bishop, and now with h4 and pawn takes, we see after rook check, bishop takes, and rook takes h4, white is suddenly winning at this point. And the reason for that is all these weak pawns. The doubled pawns here and here, as well as this weak isolated pawn, provides Prognananda a huge chance of winning. So, why did David Howell allow this? Well, there wasn't really anything he could have done. Um, he possibly could have hung on a little longer. Uh, rook to a2, just simply maintaining the pressure. So in rook, en in, in rook end games, you have to be very patient because if you want to trade pawns, if you want to just release the tension, you're going to create weaknesses for yourself. All right, we're going back here. And that's really the amazing thing about uh, this game is that a 12 year old boy is so patient in a rook end game and he just manages to grind his opponent down now. All right, attacking the e5 pawn. So what about um, f4? Well, we don't want to see that yet because then it just opens himself up to a weak king. And now he's suddenly trying to flee checkmate. So he keeps his king safe and just goes for rook to c7, attacking black's own weak pawns. Takes, takes. 
And now white is a pawn up with black having two very weak pawns. So he doesn't really want to trade. He wants to uh, keep his rooks for now. And he goes about checking and trying to maneuver into a better position. Now after rook to h, or h8 check, he should have just repeated with rook to g7. Instead, king out. And now Prognananda is preparing to do kind of a x-ray to protect this pawn. So he's going to lose the b4 pawn, but he's going to win the rest of black's weak pawns. All right, so at this point, it's a winning advantage for white. Trades a rook. And with rook to e2, Prognananda is keeping the black king from ever reaching his pawn. And now the protection of the pawn after g4 and f3 is really up to his rook. And it's a completely winning advantage at this point because Prognananda simply will bring his king over. All right, so after the rook goes over, well, you might ask why did he release the protection of the pawn? Well, the reason is that, um, for example, if he plays rook to c, uh, or rook to f7, then he'll simply check, and then after king to e6, he's going to win this pawn um, by bringing his rook in. The pawn will fall, he'll have two connected passers, and the game the game's over. Um, he can also check as well um, if he doesn't move the rook and then trade rooks, win the pawn. So it's an easy win at this point. Um, and actually, actually after he moved, uh, we see game over at this point. Game over here. Uh, two plus thing he can do. I don't know, my, my computer is going a little slow at this point. All right. So the end of this game uh, with this rook end game is just incredible to me uh, how he was outplayed. He outplayed a 2700 grandmaster throughout a game by being incredibly solid. Um, there was really no point that I saw in this game uh, that David Howell could have done something a little better, maybe slight uh, mistakes here and there, but really there's nothing he could have done. Prognananda is just too solid in this game uh, to prevent the loss of these pawns, the weak pawns. Um, as I said, that critical moment where he traded on h4, we go back here. Um, that might have been something he could have prepared, but this, this knight was uh, going to be traded anyway. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this game. Very interesting and amazing game by a 12 year old boy. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.